Hi, uh, welcome. I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman, the uh, now the wellness director at Lufthansa Health uh, Network. Uh, a wonderful job. You know, I was a neurosurgeon for 44 years, but frankly, for 30 years, I realized I could get a lot of the people well by teaching them uh, wellness. And uh, I've written many books about it. You can uh, get them on uh, Amazon, covering every uh, sub you can think of from diet to exercise to stress reduction. To, and today we have a fascinating subject, uh, sort of in a series of uh, shows we're doing. The, I've done shows before on sugar and, and, uh, uh, and, and, and fat and protein and, uh, and stress and narcotic prescriptions. And, uh, and this is fascinating. You, you would think after all that, uh, that all fat is bad. No, that's incorrect. Uh, there are actually some good fats, and, uh, and it's quite important to know what they are because it can keep us um, uh, healthy. I think you're going to like this show. I think it's going to be kind of uh, uh, interesting. Uh, we're going to go through the history uh, of a discovery of the essential fatty acids. What are the essential fatty acids? They're the ones our body doesn't make, and so we have to eat them. And, uh, and it's very important because it can help prevent uh, uh, disease. Uh, and it, let's go th through the essential fatty acids a little bit as to uh, what they do. Uh, they act in the membranes of our 70 trillion body cells. Yeah, that has a lot to do with phospholipids. Before living things, uh, didn't have a circuitry system like, like we have. Uh, all uh, protozoa, amoeba, for example, uh, amoeba, uh, they had these essential fatty acids, they're called eicosanoids, in the membranes of the cells, and they could jump from cell to cell, and they still do today. We still have those today. They were, in essence, the intel chips of our body. We didn't know about them. We didn't really discover them. Um, uh, till the 40s, 50s, 60s, and I'm going to review the history in some uh, uh, detail uh, that indeed there are some good fats. We didn't always uh, know that. You know, for 30 years, uh, Ansel Keys, the nutritionist uh, from uh, Minnesota, you know, was pushing at us uh, that all fat is bad, uh, and he didn't uh, for a time differentiate even saturated and unsaturated fat depending on the amount of carbon and hydrogen atoms they had, and he defended it very vigorously, uh, although eventually the science caught uh, up to him, and he was very reluctant to admit uh, uh, that, uh, that actually there were some good uh, uh, fats. Uh, and, uh, I mean, we literally uh, had a fat mafia. They would literally attack, you know, not physically, verbally, the speakers, who were trying to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, maybe all fats aren't uh, quite so bad. You know, in, in, uh, in what is the main uh, things that are cause all this vascular disease, heart disease, diabetes, strokes, uh, dementia, autoimmune disease? Is it fat? Is it sugar? Is it a combination? Uh, and it's uh, uh, very interesting. Remember, we discussed on my last uh, uh, talk here last week uh, where I spoke about fructose the evil twin, uh, as a, the half of sucrose going to the liver uh, and uh, uh, turning into, into uh, fat. So uh, sugar is definitely a part of the, the story. Glucose itself and fructose even a bigger part. Uh, and uh, we, I think we had a nice show on that uh, uh, last week. But fat also plays a major uh, uh, part. Uh, remember, in Dr. Lutkin, uh, in around the 1960s, uh, published a, a famous book, and he thought sugar was the main cause of vascular disease and diabetes uh, uh, and cancer, and he was shut down for a period of time. Uh, and, and Dr. Uh, uh, Cleave, a surgeon on a carrier in England, 60s, same time, from, from, also from England, uh, uh, put out a book. Uh, called saccharin disease, and also proposed that sugar really was the main uh, problem uh, in uh, vascular disease. Uh, uh, and 
uh, heart disease, uh, type 2 di uh, diabetes, but again, was kind of shut down by Dr. Ansel Keys for 30 years. Uh, but slowly, our uh, thinking on the subject uh, uh, changed. Uh, and uh, so we had the low fat mafia in the literature. Government wouldn't fund the research for it, and it was a real uh, pr uh, problem. So slowly, we discovered there are different types of fats saturated fat, unsaturated fat polyunsaturated fat, monosaturated fats, and their reaction in the body was totally different. We also then had hydrogenated fats now. Uh, those are generally outlawed uh, because they're so unhealthy. They reduce our good HDL and increase our bad LDL. Uh, so they're somewhat restricted at this point. They were especially prominent, as you know, in uh, French fries. Uh, where the change really started was uh, two doctors, Dr. Bang, easy to remember, Dr. Bang, and the other one, Dr. Dyerberg, two uh, physician nutrition researchers from Denmark decided to go uh, to Greenland and study the Eskimos because, uh, remember, we were against fats at that time because they heard they were eating a high-fat diet. They were eating the blubber from walruses uh, uh, and, and, and whales and, and, uh, and, and a good 50% fat diet or more, but yet almost no heart disease or vascular disease and a low rate of cancer. They wanted to have the answer to that. So they literally got on sailboats and jumped between the islands. Uh, and an interesting story, they visited Greenland five different times over the years. They drew the blood, and they, th they then had gas liquid spec uh, chromatography, and they studied the different fats, trying to differentiate them, uh, and, and they were able to identify saturated fat and unsaturated fats, but there was one fat in there that caused a big spike on the uh, uh, chromatography and spectrography studies. They didn't know what it was. So they saved some of the blood after they studied, and, and their compatriots in Denmark had a high rate of heart disease. So that really stimulated them to try to find out uh, what's going on here uh, with the uh, Eskimos. They did note that uh, when they drew the blood from the Eskimos, it seemed to t for them to take five or six minutes to stop bleeding versus typical person from Denmark or us in general, about two or three minutes. They didn't note that, didn't know the reason for that at that time. Uh, they then went over to uh, Minnesota and looked up uh, the world's expert in, 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 in uh, fat studies at, at that time, uh, Dr. Mark Holman. And Dr. Holman uh, was in Austin, uh, Minnesota, uh, and he worked with, uh, also for a uh, company that was the main maker of Spam. <laughs> yeah. I don't eat it no more, but years ago I used to eat Spam out of my dad's deli. Very unhealthy. And, uh, but that company at least hired him to do research. Uh, uh, and uh, and they spent a lot of time with him, and, uh, and, and very quickly, Dr. Holman identified the magic spike uh, uh, as being a fatty acid, uh, uh, EPA, and, uh, and, and then they kind of figured, well, maybe this was the fatty acid uh, that was uh, causing uh, the uh, Eskimos to live longer. Uh, and eventually, they work out some of the science of it, uh, and... Uh, and, and, and uh, they started studying the, the essential fatty acids like uh, ALA, alpha-linolenic acid. The story of alpha-linolenic acid, that's the omega-3. You know, we hear about the omega-3 and the omega-6s, and I want you to know the difference. The omega-3 is the anti-inflammatory, uh, the friendly one that stops inflammation. And it's very interesting. That is in every plant in the universe. Yes, alpha linolenic acid, ALA, is in every plant in the universe because that's the fat that reacts to photosynthesis in the chloroplast uh, and gathers energy from the universe. So without ALA, there would be no life on this planet. Uh, they're the ones that pick up the energy, the photons from the sun, uh, and convert it to en energy. Very interesting. Uh, but the uh, and that's the omega-3. Uh, the pro-inflammatory uh, linolenic acid 
uh, is the omega-6 and can be destructive to our body. But it's the ratio of the three and the six that are important, that are important. We Americans normally like to have the ratio one to one, two to one, uh, maybe uh, three uh, omega-6 and two uh, uh, omega-3. Uh, but um, we Americans have about 11 to one, 12 to one ratio of the pro-inflammatory omega-6 versus the anti-inflammatory omega-3. Uh, and that, these scientists believe, and we now know, is making us sick, causing heart disease and vascular disease and strokes and autoimmune disease and higher rates of cancer. I mean, this is very interesting. So ALA is mainly in plants. Every plant uh, uh, has it. Very uh, interesting, and that's why in terms of, well, how can I get some ALA? I mean, one way is to eat a plant diet. That's where that recommendation came from. Uh, and uh, so uh, this ALA captures the energy of the sun and really is, is life. It's the basis of all life. Uh, and uh, so, and, and these fats have generally 18, 20, 22 carbons, like uh, uh, ALA uh, becomes EPA uh, and then uh, becomes DHA, okay? I'm going to use these abbreviations because it's easier. These other scientific names are more difficult to remember. Uh, so uh, these are the names you want to remember when you t take a supplement, which I'm going to recommend uh, uh, perhaps in the end, or to eat foods with these in them, the good ones, uh, ALA, EPA, DHA. Uh, and, it, and they're named differently because of the number of carbon atoms. DSA, DHA uh, has 20 carbons in it. Uh, ALA is 18. And the, and the number of hydrogen bonds that are in them make them unsaturated or saturated uh, uh, are uh, in, in very important. DHA uh, jumps from cell to cell very quickly. That's what is in our retina, in, in our uh, brain uh, and it is very important. It makes us fast. For example, a hummingbird, you know, how quickly they, they uh, move their wings, you know, I mean, it's an unbelievable rate uh, per second that they move them. It's full of DHA, full of DHA. Very interesting. Their legs, which they don't move as much, doesn't have as much DHA. They studied that in, in, in detail. So these are very important. These are things that slow us down or speed us up. Uh, and they've studied different animals, the fast-moving animals, the slow-moving animals. They studied the DHA compound, uh, content. Uh, and, uh, and the omega-6, uh, a, a linolenic acid, uh, the one that causes is pro-inflammatory, although we need some of it. We need some of it. You can't go totally without omega-6s. Uh, uh, eventually, it becomes arachnidinic acid, the pro-inflammatory essential fatty acid about 22 uh, uh, carbons, and, and generally uh, the linolenic acid uh, will uh, then uh, turn in, into uh, uh, DGL and DGLHA. Uh, so it, it's progressive uh, down the line with different number of hydrogen and carbon atoms. But these are terms that you'll hear, DGLA, that's pro-inflammatory pro uh, essential essential fatty acid. Remember, essential means we have to take it in, and it's not made about in our uh, body. Uh, and the DHA, uh, uh, for example, uh, can move very quickly. It's very kinky and, and, uh, and depends on the number of carbon bonds. You don't have to know the exact, but you can uh, uh, t see that it makes a difference. I mean, why do we think essential fatty acids are, are so important? Let's review a little bit what the essential fatty acids do, especially the uh, omega-3. Uh, it inhibits inflammation uh, throughout your body. That's pretty important. It prevents thrombosis. It's anti-clotting. So if you try to avoid a, a heart attack, for example, uh, or uh, excessive, uh, because that can cause the thrombosis, taking a, a, for a heart patient or a, a person wanting to avoid heart disease to take some fish oil, you can see the point. Or some nuts that have omega-3 in them, you can see the point. Or a plant-based diet, which they have more omega-3 in them. 
uh, they decrease your triglycerides, some of the bad fats in, in your blood, and sometimes they're difficult to reduce the level of tri triglycerides, so we take uh, a proper amount of omega-3 and avoid foods uh, full of omega-6s, uh, like uh, beef raised uh, in a CAFO, in a concentrated animal feeding organization where they feed it nothing but corn and oil products, genetically altered corn and, and farm products and pesticides and herbicides is full of omega-6s, six, pro-inflammatory, uh, uh, and uh, it will have much higher uh, omega-6 in it. Uh, remember, Americans are running a 12 to 1 uh, ratio versus uh, it should be 2 to 1, 1 to 1 uh, ratio compared to some other countries, for example. They all, omega-3s also prevent cardiac arrhythmias. Remember, they have to do with speed and conduction in the cell membranes. So that it's very important uh, to uh, take them, especially if you have a heart problem. If you take omega-3s regularly, uh, uh, heart attacks, heart disease, it reduced 30, 50 percent, depending on what studies. Even double-blind studies, uh, very important. Uh, it helps prevent hardening the arteries. Uh, uh, it reduces the inflammatory response. If they do a CRP test to, to measure the amount of inflammation in your body, that figure will come down if you take some uh, fish oil. Uh, Im improves the viscosity of the blood, that it can flow rapidly through your arteries. Prevents oxidation, which is rusting of your, of your body, of your arteries. Uh, it stabilizes plaque. If there's a buildup of cholesterol in your arteries, uh, uh, remember we have in our body 300,000 miles of capillaries. Wow. Wow, Dr. Kesham, yes. 300,000 miles of very small blood vessels. So to keep them clean and functioning uh, and uh, uh, very important in the fish oil, uh, omega-3s help that. So it stabilizes uh, uh, plaque, uh, a very, criti very critical uh, uh, thing. And uh, uh, so uh, the uh, DHA content is, is very important even in babies. Sometimes if it's okay uh, with the doctor involved in the case, sometimes mothers take uh, uh, fish oil or uh, methods of raising omega-3 in the body because uh, the, the development of the brain of a child uh, can depend on that and, and to give it to children. Uh, I think you have to clear that with your doctor uh, and you, you, uh, to see what they uh, recommend, but to at least ask about it. Uh, and, uh, and some aquatic plants are full of uh, DHA. Remember the fish, you know, eat these aquatic plants and they have it in the body. Now, if they think that you're eating is eating mainly omega-6s, well, guess what you'll be getting? If you're eating fish uh, raised in a pond instead of the ocean, you'll be getting omega-6s. If you're eating fish uh, from uh, the ocean, you'll be getting the omega-3s. Uh, very interesting uh, way, uh, frankly, uh, to uh, uh, look at it. Uh, and. Uh, let us uh, continue on our uh, journey uh, here. Now, trans fats, you know, were outlawed essentially in 2006, uh, where we uh, took oils and made them solid by adding a hydrogen bond. Okay, that's called hydrogenation. So, look at you need to look at a label, read labels, and see if you're uh, e uh, eating or uh, drinking hydrogenated uh, foods. They've been generally outlawed here, but you never know, especially if you're traveling in a foreign country or. Uh, if they snuck one by you, that you know, get to avoid these uh, uh, French fries today. Certain fast food restaurants uh, don't have hyd hydrogenated oils in them anymore, which is certainly a good thing. And, uh, and remember, these essential fatty acids are difficult to study, very difficult to study because that some of them, like DHA, lives about 32 seconds. Difficult to study. They first Called, at first, uh, they uh, called them prostaglandins. Why did they call them that? Because they, they were studying uh, the uh, reproductive system and found there were some very fast-moving uh, chemicals in there. And, and, and it turns out they were essential fatty acids. Uh, but it took like 3,000 prostates to make a, a very small amount uh, of material to study. And they called it uh, prostaglandin. 
but it really was EPA it was an essential fatty acid. And they found it now in other organs also. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, generally, we don't feel too kindly about genetic engineering because the corn we're eating today has been genetically engineered. The wheat we're eating today has been genetically changed, never tested in humans, is making us sick. Uh, but genetic engineering, uh, I think, should be supported because we could uh, come up uh, with a genetically engin engineered food that, that has natural good essential fatty acids in them. So it, it could have some uh, value, and some of that has been done. Uh, and uh, so uh, Dr. Bain Greenberg went back to, to uh, 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 Greenland uh, four or five times to continue on this uh, research. And eventually and slowly, the scientists changed in their thinking. The government, unfortunately, has not financed uh, a great deal of this, this work, partly because of the reluctance of industry, they could lose some business, uh, uh, and, uh, which is unfortunate. I, I saw many references in the books I've read here uh, about that. Incidentally, two very good books to read, uh, is, uh, which I'm quoting from generously, The Queen of Fats by Susan Alpert, not even a doctor, but I will tell you. Uh, she really researched it. She visited these places. A wonderful book to read. A wonderful uh, book to read. The other one, uh, written by Dr. Joe Maroon, who incidentally uh, was a student of mine when I was at Georgetown, although he went to IU and he's pretty famous. He was the main doctor for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He wrote an excellent book, Fish Oil, uh, the Anti-Inflammatory, Joe Maroon, MD. Uh, I tell you, worth, really worth reading. They have in there, too, websites, uh, different places that, that you can order blood tests to check on the amount of central fatty acid in your body because it's not part of routine laboratory testing. Most unfortunate, you go to get routine, routine blood and, and H, HRA testing, they, won't test your, they, they will not test uh, your essential fatty acids or the ratio of three to sixes or, or, or an index that's been formed. That's not routinely done. You get a center to an outside lab, but those websites, those phone numbers are in these uh, 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 books in there. And I, I think especially, say you have heart disease, and I even recommend it without that, but suppose you have heart disease, you've had a heart attack. God, you've got to know, please, find out the level of your omega-3s and omega-6. See what the ratio is so you can take uh, action because the amount of supplements of fish or things that you eat to, to get your levels of omega-3 up and then get the ratio right, you may need to double what you're doing. And uh, so to get the blood test done, I, I think is, is critical. It, it is critical. It's not routinely done. It's not routinely uh, uh, done. Uh, and uh, so uh, we have to uh, consider the government a bit at fault here for not really double-blind long-term studies. These scientists complain a lot about that in these books, that it's not proper government funding of long-term studies. Uh, and, uh, and they're a bit slow uh, in, in their recommendations, constantly uh, behind. Uh, Ansel Keys, remember we spoke about this sincere doctor uh, for 30 years, you know, pushed the, that all fats are alike theory at us and, and, and that that was a cause of obesity and overweight and, and vascular disease and strokes. And if I look at our country today, it's clearly he wasn't right. We're running a 70% overweight uh, situation in this country. 33% or so people are obese. Uh, probably 50% of the people have diabetes. That's pre-diabetes and even before that, uh, it, and they're going to be type 2 diabetics, and they get vascular changes uh, already, uh, and, and, and they're not tested vigorously enough. Remember, I spoke in one of my previous lectures in a book I wrote, The Golden Opportunity. The golden opportunity is, is to catch yourself uh, at a very early stage where your blood sugar may even be normal, your HbA1c may be normal, but your serum insulin is elevated, pointing to the future. You have insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia. You're going to get type 2 diabetes. The vascular changes are already occurring in your body, but your blood sugar is normal. Oh, you're not, you're not diabetic. You weigh 220 pounds. I tell you, 
get a two-hour glucose tolerance test where you swallow 75 grams of sugar, fasting. Then you get a serum insulin level and a blood sugar, fasting. And at one hour and at two hour, you may find your blood sugar is fine. You're not diabetic. But your insulin level is up. You have hyperinsulinemia. You have insulin resistance. And because of the high insulin level, it's an anabolic hormone. It causes you to gain weight and it also inflames your body. When I see a person uh, that clearly is overweight, to me, because of what insulin does and what omega-6 is do, I think their body is on fire. I see a fire. That body is on fire. They may look good. This is a no judgment-free zone. We're not judging anybody. I'm trying to save people a lot of illness. Uh, to me, that body is on fire. So the golden opportunity is to, to run that two-hour glucose tolerance test. I had referred a patient I work, a person that I work out with occasionally over at Planet Fitness the other day, and he, he you know, weighed 215 pounds, and I encouraged him to get this test done, and I found a good doctor for him, but, but he didn't run that test. I was so disappointed uh, because his, his, his fat figures were up a bit, not a terrible amount, but I bet you his metabolic syndrome you know, elevated, blood pressure, overweight, waist size, uh, uh, too big, a bit elevated, LDL, uh, too low HDL. He's got a metabolic syndrome. Uh, his body's on fire. Blood sugar's normal. See my point? He's missing the golden opportunity, and he's going to go back and get, and get these uh, tests done because it is a golden opportunity. I can prevent, Jesus, uh, uh, years uh, uh, of sickness and, and length in his life. And remember, the first symptom, first symptom of heart disease, if you have metabolic syndrome, uh, you may even be of normal weight. So to get your uh, blood work checked at a young age, I say even as a teenager, uh, if, if you have a child that's overweight, two, six years old, get the blood work checked. Uh, because vascular disease, Dr. Edward from New Orleans said heart disease begins at age two and maybe even before. Receiving, we're seeing a significant increase in children age five. They're getting obese. They're going to have type 2 diabetes as a teenager, as a teenager. Then it may not be alive in the 30s and 40s. And the first symptom of vascular disease in these people, remember, the first symptom, they're going to have vascular disease, the first symptom, angina, stroke, transient ischemia attack, no. No warning, 50% of those people, the first symptoms of vascular disease is death. That's why I'm here. We want to avoid that. It's death. They just die. Have chest pain, boom, and they die. Don't even make it to the hospital. There's 50% of the people who are going to get vascular disease that are metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes. The first symptom of heart disease is not arrhythmia or angina or stroke or whatever. No. It's death. It's sudden death. And that's why, you know, uh, that we uh, uh, are here today. So... Uh, the island of Umanak, U-M-A-N-A-K, is where uh, Dr. Bang and Dr. Dyerberg went to study the uh, Eskimos. Uh, and, and actually, what's interesting is it, it, it has mountains on it, and the mountains are in the shape of a heart. Maybe God did it that way, huh? Kind of, kind of interesting. Took, took five trips and studied. Uh, and Eskimos were eating uh, uh, seal meat, uh, fish, uh, and the blubber from, from uh, whales. And, uh, but yet, hardly any uh, vascular disease. Uh, the blood studies were normal, except for this one high spike of a fat, which was uh, EPA, the uh, a cosinoid, the, uh, the, the good fat. And, uh, uh, and they uh, really are the heroes uh, in this uh, uh, story. Uh, and, uh, and they published their first paper in Lancet, and, uh, and it's a classic. I mean, it's a classic. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, enlarge, 
animals uh, have more omega-6s than we do, uh, but uh, through evolution, uh, their ratios are low. They're low. Uh, so uh, they uh, don't develop vascular disease unless you can take a, a, a monkey and feed him the standard American diet. They're going to get heart attacks and strokes, but they are mainly uh, uh, vegetable uh, and fruit eaters. And, uh, uh, but they eat it seasonally. They don't eat it all year round. So they get away with eating fructose, which remember fructose, the evil twin, and the uh, same fructose as in fruit. Uh, we eat a limited amount, doesn't bother us at all because there's vitamins and minerals. Okay, but fructose is metabolized in the liver. It's of all the ATP, takes the energy away, is converted to fat. Uh, so uh, the amount of fructose that animals are eating is, is limited uh, versus uh, the amount that uh, we eat. And uh, so uh, they analyzed about 130 samples, brought it back with them, carried it to Minnesota, and Dr. Harmon spent a lot of time uh, 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 studying this. And uh, uh, the, uh, the word, they call them eicosanoids, okay? That means 18 in Greek. Why do you call them omega-3s? Dr. Mark Holman managed, is the one who named them finally. There was a lot of, he didn't even publish an article on that. It sort of uh, happened. Uh, uh, omega is the last uh, letter in the uh, alphabet. And he was, uh, uh, had, uh, family was from Greece. Uh, and it's just term, and it's stuck. He finally walked in a store one day and they had a sign up uh, omega-3 eggs. He said, well, I guess they finally accepted my ter terminology. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, there's been a lot of confusion about fats. That's the reason I'm here today, a lot of confusions. You know, uh, Ansel Key says, uh, cut out the fats and you'll be healthier, but it didn't happen. We, we all became more sick and more obese. So they finally, uh, you know, uh, said avoid this. Uh, uh, fat altogether in the 60s, then they uh, said uh, avoid all the oils in the 80s and avoid the trans fats in the 1990s. Public is confused. So I'm trying to set it st uh, straight here today that indeed you do need to eat or supplement. We'll discuss uh, what foods you know to do it with. Uh, and, and they learned a lot more when they start using uh, IVs for parental feeding and some of the intensive care, the, the GI tract. Uh, has a disease in it, they, they can't possibly eat uh, cancer or whatever, uh, and they start feeding people through intravenous. They keep the electrolytes and the sodiums and potassiums okay, uh, but they became very sick. Yeah, their weight just went away uh, and became uh, very sick until they uh, figured out uh, that they were missing the essential uh, fatty acids, and they, they start uh, feeding them uh, uh, differently. Uh, and uh, uh, and that kind of proved that also that we needed some uh, uh, fatty acids, that we needed some fatty uh, acids. Uh, so uh, Mark Holman in Minnesota worked out most of the fatty acids. He was the world's uh, expert, and he worked out the nomenclature. Uh, and everybody we mentioned that ALA has 18 uh, carbons, EPA 20, DHA 22, the omega-6s. Uh, we have uh, lilanic acid, GLA, DGLA. You see that. So we can go to the health food store uh, and try to uh, perhaps take some uh, supplements. I want you to be familiar, you know, uh, with the terms, uh, although you don't need to know the chemical names. Uh, and saturation means unsaturated fat. Saturated fat means saturated fat has more hydrogen ions in it, makes it less, flex less flexible, uh, unsaturated fats. Uh, can move uh, 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 quicker, uh, and uh, and it has a lot to do with double bonds and number of bonds, and that's the chemistry of it. Uh, of normally, a, uh, if one molecule of fat in the blood is a glycerol, is a glycerol, and three fatty acids uh, make a molecule of, of fat. Uh, and the way we Americans are eating. Uh, the fat, sad, toxic American diet, remember the fructose, the fructose, 25% uh, of the people in this nation have fatty liver. You do a CT scan or MRI scan or DEXA scan, you'll see fat 
deposited in their liver, their pancreas, in the omentum, that's the membrane around the bowel. So when you look at someone uh, with a big belly, the majority of the fat is not under the skin. It's in their organs. And fat is a gland. It's not just fat. It makes nasty chemicals, cancer factors, estrogen. 70% of uterine cancer is associated with obesity because of the estrogen in it. Yes, rarely do I meet a woman who knows that. I don't know whose fault that is. There was a show on uh, satellite on uh, that great radio show, the doctor show, Channel 82. Uh, uh, if you drive along, listen to that. You're going to be a doctor in a year, I'll tell you. Great show. They were discussing this, and actually I called in. And, and, and ask them the reason why when I'm talking to 100 women, nurses, whatever, they don't know uh, that, that ovarian cancer, breast cancer, have a good 30% relationship to obesity. But uterine cancer, around 70%. I can tell you the articles are sort of written up in. Yeah, so, uh, Super Immunity, uh, Dr. Furman, my friend Dr. Furman, it's right in that book, and the references. This is a... This, this is a a fact uh, and important uh, for you to know. So uh, fatty liver, of course, uh, results uh, in secretion of very low density LDL, which will inflame your arteries, causes dementia, memory loss, type 2 diabetics have a lot of uh, memory loss problems, dementia, not Alzheimer's disease, dementia, memory loss. Uh, and uh, also the VLDL and the sh high sugars in the blood hook up with a protein from ages, aggregate uh, advanced glycation end products, and they de the, the aging projects, uh, uh, products uh, that deposit in your brain cells, in your skin, make you look older. Uh, just like someone who smokes too much, looks 20 years older in their skin, ages uh, with too much sugar in their blood and fat, uh, will, do, will do the uh, same uh, uh, thing. Uh, corn oil. Uh, a lot of the oils are full of omega-6s. Remember, that's a pro-inflammatory. Uh, corn oil is full of pro-inflammatories. And, and that's the reason uh, eating uh, meat products, a lot of meat products, uh, uh, is not good for you because of the omega-6s. What are these animals eating? Uh, what is the pork eating, the lamb, what, the lamb eating, the beef eating, uh, the turkey that they're feeding in the farms, and they're in cages, and they don't move? What are they eating? Wheat, corn. All wheat products are full of omega-6s, all of them. All wheat products. I don't care if it's uh, vulgar, if it's corn, uh, if it's wheat. They're full of omega-6s, pro-inflammatory factors. So even, like I said, even if you don't have vascular disease, uh, check the amount of omega-3s and 6 you got in you. You may have to pay a little extra, but it, it can prevent uh, a disease. You can do something uh, uh, about it. So corn oil uh, is, of course, we know from high fructose corn syrup, it's a double whammy. I mean, it has uh, omega-6s in it. Uh, uh, it, it. It has fructose in it, which is metabolized in the liver, makes you fat. 50% of obesity is related to sodas that we drink, uh, uh, incidentally. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, but I, I think people are becoming much more aware of it. Uh, but I want you to keep track of the amount of fructose. So of what you're consuming per day. 35 grams is okay, but a piece of carrot cake, 50 grams of fructose. Where is that metabolized? In your liver. You want to gain weight? Eat, eat a piece of pie or uh, a, a carrot cake uh, every day. You're guaranteed to gain a lot of weight and get very sick. To trans fats, we talked about that. Then fried foods, french fries, some of the fast food restaurants no longer have those in there. So that's uh, good. Donuts, cookies, crackers are full of trans fats. Look at the labels. Read the labels. Uh, and remember, fructose does not turn your appetite off. Uh, so that's the reason uh, that uh, you not eat just one donut. You eat one donut, boy, I feel good because it sends some chemicals to the brain, morphine-like products. I'm in heaven, okay? But you eat the whole dozen donuts uh, because you're depressed, not feeling good. You feel so much better 
Believe me, I've done it. I've had stressful days. If there's a dozen donuts laying there, which you don't see in my house for the last few years, but you ought to see them, believe me, I put them down. So this is judgment-free zone. Uh, but don't, don't look at it. Don't look at the queue. And people ask me, they're cashing. What do, you, what do you eat? I said, seafood. If I see the food, I eat it. <laughs> okay. Don't buy it. Don't, 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 don't see it. Okay. And uh, so uh, uh, cookies, donuts are full of omega-6s, the bad, the bad fats. And, uh, and we spoke already. Uh, so monosaturated fats are some of the good fats, some omega-3. So where you find that? Some olive oil, you, f you find that. Uh, you can find some in nuts. You can find some canola oil, cashews. So I think, uh, like that, my friend Dr. Furman would say, he wrote that famous book, Eat to Live. He eats, a, 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 you know, an ounce of nuts uh, a day. He admits sometimes he'll even uh, eat uh, uh, two, uh, two ounces. I think it's a bit much. But, but that's got, you know, some good fats in it. It has a little bit of bad fats in it, too, but, but uh, more good fats than bad fats. Saturated fats would be whole milk, butter, cheese, ice cream, chocolate, coconut, although co the fat from coconut is sort of a middle saturated, so it's not quite as bad as you think, uh, uh, like uh, not quite as bad as you think, but it is saturated uh, uh, fat, and there's some health aspects to coconut milk and stuff. That's something you don't want to do every day. Uh, so uh, essential fatty acids, uh, let's speak again about what, what they do. Uh, they uh, uh, regula regulate the pressure in your eyes, affect the movement of your joints, affect your immune response. Uh, they uh, direct hormone flow. Uh, they affect your autonomic reflexes. Uh, they uh, affect cellular division higher rates of cancer if you don't have essential uh, fatty acids. They regulate the traffic uh, in your body, in your cells, so they speed up your nerves. Remember we spoke about DHA already, so they affect nerve transmission. Uh, so, uh, so a diet short of anything has great effects uh, uh, on your health. So, I mean, what should you do? Let's go over that a little bit. I think it's a combination of things. Uh, I, I think uh, to eat some fish a couple of times a week, I think, uh, uh, is definitely a good thing. Perhaps some salmon. There are different types of fish. A mackerel is, is even better. And there are tables in these two books I mentioned that tell you the amount uh, of DHA and ALA uh, and, and, and omega-6s that are in these uh, uh, fish. It tells the exact amount. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, high uh, uh, in mackerel, sardines, uh, for example, are very high because they eat the plants that have the omega-3 in them. That's the reason. But fish can have PCBs and they, they can have mercury in them. So it's a little, little bit tricky uh, to eating fish seven days a week. I don't, I don't think I'd be for it. Uh, so twice a week at that. Okay, I think I'd take a supplement. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, a thousand milligrams combination uh, of uh, EPA, ALA, uh, and uh, uh, DHA, the combination of the three, perhaps. Uh, I think a, a one capsule, if you've got advanced vascular disease, a number of heart attacks in conjunction with your doctor, you might consider uh, taking two grams. Uh, but I, I would definitely get my blood work done. See what's your ratio, uh, how much omega-6, omega-3 in your body. I think to check on that is, uh, is good, to eat, eat some nuts. Uh, eat a vegetable diet. Remember I said every vegetable has got some alpha lilonic acid in it, so to eat a vegetarian vegetable uh, diet, uh, uh, low fructose. All vegetables get some fructose, but it's very low. If you want to know the fructose content of your food, uh, read Richard Johnson's book. It'll be in the back of my book coming out shortly, uh, Fructose Evil Twin, Tables of the Fructose Content of Food. That's important for you to know. That's more important than even the fats. Uh, frankly, it, because fructose makes a fatty liver, which leads to inflammation throughout the, your body. Remember what I say? You know, if you're way overweight and you get vastly the diabetes, you're on fire. I see a fire. We need to turn the fi fire off. Uh, so a combination uh, of uh, supplements, uh, of fish, 
uh, vegetables, some nuts. Has a, you know, use a combination and, and check your blood work. Uh, and uh, I think, and the general recommendation, eat, eat fruit and, the veg and vegetables. Uh, uh, and the limit, you know, some plant oil, maybe a tablespoon full of uh, olive oil, okay. And, uh, but uh, if you eat too much uh, uh, plant oils like safflower, plant oil, for example, the, uh, canola oil is more healthy. It could have some omega-6 uh, in it. So you got to know what the content is, the oils that you're eating. Canola oil is better. Uh, soybean, olive oil are better. Eat a variety of fish, a variety of, of fish, uh, and, uh, and, sp and spray some nuts onto your vegetables. Dr. Furman recommends that. I think it's a good one. That increases the absorption of the nutrients. Remember, the vegetables have in them the vitamins, the minerals, and the 25,000 phytochemicals, the enzymes. It's the mosaic, the symphony, symphony uh, the music of interaction of all this that leads to good health. It's the interaction of the vitamins, the minerals, the phytochemicals. That's the reason half your plate should be vegetables. Another uh, quarter uh, uh, should be uh, com complex carbohydrates, not grains. On, on the uh, uh, government's plate right now, there are 100% whole grains. No way. Read uh, uh, Davis's book, Cardiologist, Wheat Belly. You'll see the danger of grains. Remember grains? I said Every grain has omega-6 in it, the pro-inflammatory. You don't want that. Uh, and uh, avoid hydrogenated food products. We spoke about that. And use and eat free-range beef if you feel you need to, or fish. Uh, because farm-raised uh, uh, products are full of uh, inflammatory uh, uh, factors, omega-6s. Remember, our nation is inflamed. 11 to 1 pro-inflammatory fats that we're eating. Um, we need to get more to 2 to 1, 1 to 1, uh, 2 to 2. Uh, and, uh, and ask your waiter, where did this come from? Where did this fish come from? I know some great restaurants in town here. And, 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 and the beef uh, and the fish they're serving is off a farm pond or concentrated animal feeding organizations uh, feeding them petroleum products, uh, corn products, remnants of other animals, chicken litter, and the whole thing is ridiculous. Remember, if what, we, what animal we eat and what it does to us depends on what they are eating. There's so many chemicals and pesticides out there. Dr. Mark Hyman, his book, Blood Sugar Solutions, says, we humans are not fit to eat. <laughs> okay, let's have a little humor, but he means every word of it. He says they studied the blood of newborn children, drew it out of the um umbilical cord and find 250 foreign chemicals in the blood of children born in the United States. Unbelievable. It's right in his book. Blood Sugar Solutions, Mark Hyman, an excellent uh, book. Uh, so uh, supplement carefully. Know what you're taking. Don't take 100 supplements. I know a gentleman, the greatest gentleman I know, but he's taking 100 supplements and his legs are numb. Well, what do you think, guys? The interaction of this is, is, is not good for health. You know, take some vitamin D, some, maybe some fish oil, flaxseed, incidentally, I meant to mention as a great supplement. Uh, to grind uh, the flax seeds down and spray them over your salad or put it in your smoothie is great. Chia seeds is almost the best source. Chia seeds are the best. So learn about these. Uh, that's a great uh, supplement. So I think if you use a combination of, the, of these uh, 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 DHA and EPA, flax seed, chia seeds, uh, and, and fish twi uh, twice a week. Exercise uh, regularly is important for good health uh, for many reasons. Increases your basic metabolic rate, shoes up some calories, causes brain cell growth, reduces cancer. We all have to exercise a certain amount of time every day. It's critical, critical. That doesn't mean you get to run marathons. I'm talking about routine uh, exercise. Maybe a little weight lifting improves the metabolism, your basic metabolic rate. A good habit. After a while, it gets to be, you know, it gets to be uh, a habit. Uh, and, and, and remember, I highly recommend that you check your blood work. I mean, as a young child, as a teenager, age 20, 25, 30, keep right on checking it. If you're sick, 
check it every three months to correct your figures. You're only as good as your blood work. You're only as good as your blood work. Remember, what you put on your plate, what you put on your plate, on your fork, has genetic structure in it. And our evolutionary genetic chromosomal body uh, that we acquired uh, through evolution reacts to the genetic structure of our food. And our bodies are revolting because the food we're eating has never been genetically tested and can chemically altered and full of pesticides and chemicals. And our evolutionary body doesn't change but 0.2% every 20,000 years. And we've only been farming 10,000 years. And the food uh, we are producing, our body isn't used to it. We're looking at tremendous rates of overweight and chronic disease that could be avoided. I went to two weddings recently and I almost, uh, I hate to say it, I almost ran out because I, I was looking at 80, 90% obesity rates. Serious obesity rates. To me, these people were on fire uh, from the inflammatory effects in the blood. They don't know it. I, I don't blame them. They have not been educated about it. The schools isn't teaching. The government uh, pays for, for uh, corn, uh, wheat, uh, and sugar, supports the price uh, uh, for Pete's sake. And, and it's killing us. Uh, instead of pointing out to us, uh, I, many women have no living idea uh, that if they're overweight, their estrogen level is up and their cancer rates are up. Uh, they've never been educated about that. Uh, and, and, and it's shameful. That should be taught in our school system. Uh, and, and we providers have to do it. It's up to us providers. That's what I'm trying to do. It's a, a judgment, you know, free uh, uh, zone here. Uh, and uh, I'm just trying to pass the word uh, to uh, uh, keep you uh, uh, healthy. Uh, uh, and uh, it is important, uh, therefore, to uh, what we put on our fork and what we drink uh, to uh, uh, drink water, for example. What are we going to drink, Doc? I mean, uh, uh, these sugary products, high fructose corn syrup, water with some lemon and lime in it. So in this food plate the government puts out, they put milk up there. But let me tell you something, uh, 5,400 mammals produce milk, okay? No mammal drinks the milk of another milk because each one has a different fat content, sugar content, protein content. A mouse doubles its size in five days because of high protein content. A human, it takes 180 days. Uh, and uh, uh, why are we giving cow's milk to human children? There are tw uh, 57 hormones in them. They put a cow in a cage. And if she's pregnant and all her hormones, they don't care. They milk it anyway, and your child uh, or you uh, 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 drink it. Uh, and uh, the enzyme it takes to break down lactose, the sugar uh, in milk, uh, uh, black people don't have that enzyme. Asian, only 70, 25% of Asians have that enzyme. Whites, 50% have that enzyme at age four. Nobody has that enzyme, so we have allergy reactions, asthma, rashes, increased type 1 diabetes. Uh, is full of hormones and growth factors which cause uh, children to have um, uh, the menstrual period starting at a very young age. So human uh, cow milk is meant for a calf. It's not meant for us. So you need to check this out a little bit. It's, it's not healthy for us. Just through government advertising, industry advertising, that we think uh, that it's a, uh, a health food. Uh, so uh, in, in summary, uh, there are good fats. And that's what we talked about. The omega-3s, the anti-inflammatory, there are bad fats. But we need some of them, too, for conduction uh, of our intel chips of our cells in our body. Get your blood checked. Uh, uh, use this combination uh, of foods. But again, so fat is not quite the enemy that we thought it was. Ansel Keys, you know, frankly, uh, finally has been buried in the literature when he dominated the literature, that fat uh, phobia uh, that uh, was occurring. But we are getting more obese and getting sicker all the time. Uh, and, and this is now uh, uh, been proven. I personally think Dr. Richard Johnson, and Dr. Mark Hyman are great books to read because they, they concentrate on this, and especially the fructose content of our food. We have in our, 
uh, we have a fat switch in our body, I'm convinced of it, and, and it's related uh, to the fructose uh, consumption, uh, that uh, metabolism that occurs in the liver uh, that raises the uric acid uh, uh, level from, from uh, metabolism, uh, and we lost that fat switch through evolution a million, million years ago. Animals uh, still have it because they hibernate, they gain fat, uh, and as soon as uh, the winter is over, uh, they lose the fat and they go back to a normal weight. We don't, do not have this switch. Uh, anyhow, thanks so much for listening, and I hope you catch some of our other lectures uh, that uh, we give to continue. It's your health we have in mind. We're trying to uh, uh, keep you from having illnesses in the first place, but if you do develop, uh, if you're overweight or if you develop type 2 diabetes, I personally think this is stoppable, avoidable and reversible. Dean Ornish published books over 25 years ago that heart disease is stoppable, preventable, and reversible. Dr. Esseltine, Dr. Furman, myself, look at Amazon, uh, my books, watch our shows. I give lectures at the Lutheran Hospital once a month uh, and, and try to attend some of those. Uh, and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, email me at Rudy Cashman at Yahoo uh, or uh, 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 call us uh, and, uh, and look at our books on uh, Amazon and join our community. I've, even with this way of eating, I've gotten now into further into the city and uh, uh, we're starting to push some of these proper way of eating to keep you healthy because we're having a serious problem all over the world, all over the world. And I um, highly appreciate you uh, watching us, and, uh, and we love you all, and uh, namaste. We'll see you next time. Uh, this will be on, on Wednesday at 9 o'clock, Comcast uh, 50, 57, uh, and uh, we will continue to educate you. Uh, and feel free to send me a book, give me a book, I'll read it, and I'll meet you at Starbucks to discuss it. Uh, and uh, uh, I love this subject because, uh, I, frankly, through this, I uh, have a lot of fellow travelers now in getting a lot of people well. Most diseases we're looking at today, 90% of them are stoppable, preventable through coaching, and that's my job. I'm a doctor. We love you all. Thank you very much for watching the show. <laughs>